Hi. Okay, uh, fear. Fear is an extremely difficult thing to talk about in terms of what I've personally learned. Uh, let me tell you why. Uh, most people today uh, understand fear for what it what it represents, not actually um, what it is. Fear is a concept of control when literally utilized through manipulation against one another um, over one another. Uh, a simple proof of this is, uh, okay, if uh, you want to have a place to live, um, you have to get a job. Um, uh, once you get the job, you have to have your wages and your income so that you can pay for the place you want to live, right? And, uh, you know, obviously having worked in the um, slave industry here in the States, United States, um, that the concept of fear is uh, used all, all the time to um, implement discipline for the um, slave owners, uh, people that uh, own the companies uh, or whatever institution that you are currently enslaved with. Um, they do this by preoccupying us um, with notions of, well, if you don't perform, you're going to lose your job, and if you lose your job, you're going to lose your home, yada, yada, yada. All of it's based upon fear. Um, how you doing? Okay. Um, the, the concept of fear, um, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't necessarily uh, exist in that realm uh, for me anymore because of uh, things that you know I've already discussed which is not just faith but knowing that everything is going to be um, the will of the most high uh, it might be a difficult concept for some people to understand even in um, the Christian mentality um, and obviously, you know, other mentalities, other faiths that, you know, require belief. Uh, but uh, when, when you travel a road that I've traveled, um, you, you will understand. You will understand that um, you're taken to places where you thought you'd almost stopped. But the information is, um, you know, is, is, is unlimited. Uh, we, we're told to, you know, uh, struggle for all the wrong reasons is my subtle point. But I don't live in this, this realm anymore because I don't care. I don't care um, about slavery. I don't care to um, do a job or not do a job. I don't care about income. I don't care about anything. Christ himself said, you know, why do you worry about where you're going to eat? You know, uh, what, where are you, why are you worried about where you're going to, to live? Um, God provides that bird over there with with food um you know, that bird doesn't have a job that's basically what he's saying i don't see that bird working a drive through a jack-in-the-box um obviously he didn't say that but that's the point of it the point is, is that christ is saying you know and, and who are you or aren't you the least of these things in other words you know god cares for you. imagine how much he cares for you you know, somebody that was given charge over these birds, these precious little animals. Um, by the way, if you hit a dog or you, you beat animals, man, you suck. Side note. Anyway, um, so, I, 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 you know, whether, whether the money comes, doesn't come, whether the provision um, is established or is not established, I don't care. I don't care about things like that because I have the knowledge that either way it's God's will. Um, this doctrine, even this doctrine was hijacked uh, during, um, you know, what we call uh, Constantine Christianity, which is all wrong. It's all based upon paganism. Um, 
you know, celebrating Christmas and Easter and all the things we're not supposed to celebrate, what they have you celebrating. Uh, and then you guys get mad at us because we're, you know, correcting you, but you call it a judgment. It's not a correction. I mean, it's not a judgment. It's a correction. There's a difference. And judgment only comes from the Most High. I can't send you to hell. Um, and that's an excellent segue into what I'm trying to say. If the powers that be, our slave owners, had any true power, uh, then they would have a leg to stand on when it comes to fear, like, do what we say, or yada, yada, yada. Okay. And ruin, um, or up unto death. Um, but the Bible tells us this. It says that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? And what does that mean? That means that, okay, wait a minute. I'm recognizing that this God is the highest God. Everything he said came true. Everything he does is right. He's the only thing that we can edify uh, holiness from. He's called the rock and the pillar because we're to rest on his truth. We're to rest on the fact that he is love. He is holiness. And everything else needs to be measured against that. And when you truly realize that and you truly understand who God is in that respect, this verse is clear. Um, I am only to fear him uh, because he's the only one that can put my body and soul into hell. Um, the, uh, the scripture, there, there's another scripture that I'm referring to, which says just that. Um, it says, fear not man who can only kill the body, fear uh, the most high, Ahaya alone, who can send both body and soul into hell. That is a very frightening thought, but it's also a very sobering thought. If you put all your trust in the only one that can send you to heaven or hell, heaven on earth, um, then what do, you, what do you got to lose? Hey, um, nothing. You know, I, if, if, you're, if you're thinking that, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to lose money, I'm going to lose this, I'm going to lose that. Uh, you know, scriptures tell us that we can't take our treasures up into heaven with us, so what does it matter if you lose any of this crap? It's all crap. It really matters. It, it's just junk. It, it, it's not real. Um, you know, so, and people really got to start thinking about this kind of stuff, because soon, very soon, um, you, have an internet, you have a big screen TV, great sound system, great movie system, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, yada, 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 um, bunch of Blu-rays, bunch of digital music and videos and all this other crap that you love doing. I like PlayStation 4 as well, so, you know, I understand that, but... The difference between me and many others, unfortunately, is that that's their, they think that's their life. They think that that's what they're supposed to live for, okay? Um, but very soon, that's all going to be over. The powers that be, the ones that control all the stuff that we purchase from them or rent from them, uh, are going to turn it off. They're going to turn it all off. No more electronics. No more interweb nets. None of that. It's gone. It's over. So you're going to sit there twiddling your thumbs, uh, wanting to have that lifestyle back because you've been indoctrinated, you've been brainwashed to believe that that's what truly matters. You know, never mind all this uh, life and death nonsense. Oh my gosh, that's so stupid. Who cares about that? I want to watch the new X-Men movie. Um, the point is, is that it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. God's got your back. And if you continue to live upon pagan principles, you are going to fall into continued slavery. The point of Christ's return isn't so that can just set the sinner free. That That is, you know, we're, we're extremely fortunate for that. That's a miracle in itself. But he's also coming back to destroy the enemy of mankind. And if you live in the world, in mankind, humanist, secular, you know, um, understanding, you're going to die in it, man. And um, if you really think that there's nothing else after life on earth, in other words, if you don't believe in life after death, hey, man, 
do yourself a solid and start really looking into it. Because you're going to find out one way or another. I'm going to find out one way or another. Um, but that, that, you know, that doesn't really test my faith because I already know. I don't, I don't believe, you know, I, I'm, uh, I can either go to hell or receive uh, heaven on earth to reign with Christ. I know it. Uh, but I, you haven't lived my life and I haven't lived yours. So we only have these things. We only have these understandings. We only have conscience to identify certain things that we cannot. Um, and we have to move away from speculation, assumption, and we have to start understanding and realizing there's something very real going on here and important. Look, man. Brothers and sisters, I'm not that crazy, you know? Um, in fact, what too many people do today in dismissing their very existence, not caring enough about themselves to, you know, I, I just, I guess, you know, living for a purpose, okay? There's too much of that going on, man. And to me, that's crazy. That's insane. For you to just sit around and only give a rat's ass about what other people tell you to give a rat's ass about. It's ridiculous. It's insane. It's stupid. Um, and it, it, it boils, it boils my eggs. It really does, man. It, it boils my eggs when people want to dismiss what reality tells us. Not what I'm saying, not what others like me are saying, but what reality tells us. You have a choice. You have a voice and you have divine purpose which means providence. Providence means divine purpose. That means you were created for a specific reason by something way beyond us. But you can, you can dismiss it all you want, but the reality is, is that you're dismissing it because you don't want to look in the mirror. You do not want to see your own sins and realize that the God of Israel, the true highest God, and that can be proven simply by the, 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 the stupidity that's, that's, that's caused against them. Christianity, Hebrew Christianity, is the largest religion that everyone hates. Why? It's pretty simple, man, because we're telling the truth. And nobody likes the truth. You guys prove it every day. Every day. You don't want to be bothered with it. Even when you're working, even when you're at a job and you're slave shift, and somebody's asking you for, you know, your job to do your job, you get upset. It's like, wow. I have to help somebody while I'm here? Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I just want to go home and, and, and watch uh, Beverly Hillbillies. <sighs> and and don't, don't get me wrong, I was there too. But the key word is was. The key word is was there. That's the key word. And it's, it's really upsetting to understand what my brothers and sisters are going through because some of them don't even know it. Let me just sit idly by, let these bureaucratic morons and these religious so-called leaders go on and on and on about what it is I should be doing and thinking when it was already written in a book. A very, very important book, the most important book, okay? And you can go on and argue about, oh my gosh, well, you know, why would I trust that man wrote it? And, you know, people, th you know, things were taken in and out of it. Yeah, no, duh, it even, it even, it even talks about that. Anyone who puts in or takes out of this book, you know, basically is going to have a special place in hell. Don't do it. Of course people do it. That's why he put it in there. You know, he's relating to what it is that your concerns are. But are your concerns legitimate? Is your motive legitimate in that? Or are you just wanting to perpetrate more sin and reject God because of that? If you do, the scriptures are very clear. You will not spend any time with or in heaven on earth. None. You're going to hell. Again, this is not condemnation from me. My own sin condemned me. Your sin condemns you. People really need to start taking responsibility of that. I have all of these secular humanists and libertarians and you know whatever think tank, and I use that term extremely loosely, out there that talks about, oh my gosh, you know, Homosexuality, it's love. Let's, it's just love. Okay, first of all, stupid. 
if it was just love, you wouldn't be worried about it. And there would be no upheaval from God himself. I'm not exclusifying homosexuality. I really don't care what homotestical things. I don't. I don't care. You guys, live and let live, rock on. But do not, do not use the Most High's word against him as if you even knew what the hell you were talking about. This is the case that I'm trying to get at. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example. Um, watching Ellen DeGeneres, I think this was like in 2012, uh, Ricky Martin came on there. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Ricky Martin is, uh, Ricky Martin, real quickly, he was a heartthrob um, when he was with a uh, Mexican group called Menudo. It became very popular, I think, in the 80s or 90s, and it's like a generational thing. Who cares? The guy uh, was on Ellen, okay? And he had actually come out, um, I think maybe a year before that, uh, that he was a home testicle. I'm like, cool, okay, whatever. But he comes out, right? Uh, on Ellen's show, and she says, my God. She uses God because they believe in Lucifer, because Ellen is part of this cabal of evil idiots. Um, and you're going to say, well, how can you do, how can she, how can you say that? She does so much for people. She's like Oprah. Dude, they do it to offset the fact that they're evil. Of course, you're going to give gifts to people that you don't know about or care about, but do you really know why they're doing it? Look at what they do on a daily basis. Anyway. The dude says, yeah, yeah, you know, it's time for me to come out and just tell the world. And, you know, he's like, hey, God doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> wow. Ricky Martin actually said that and everybody started clapping. Of course everybody started clapping. This is nobody like me on Ellen DeGeneres telling him the truth. And you the truth, which is what I'm thankful to do right now, is, first of all, even if that statement was true, it's not. Read Genesis where God says it repented him, okay, that he created man. Because the Nephilim were all over the place, destroying the children. He hated it. He regretted it. He repented. He made a mistake. Okay, so first of all, Ricky Martin, you're a liar. Um, second of all, even if he didn't make mistakes, what would that matter to your choice? You're the one that made the mistake, not God. See, that's what I hate. If you are going to be anything you want to be without God's will, that means an adulterer, and I'm not just talking about homotesticality. I don't care about homosexuality. I am not identifying that as a whole. I'll use other examples some other time about how heterosexuals do it all the time. In fact, heterosexuals are actually more uh, capable to sin than nearly every other aspect. I said heterosexuals, right? Yeah, heterosexuals, not homosexuals. It doesn't really matter. It's not, it's not a competition. The point is, is that if you are going to blame anyone for anything that goes wrong in this world, Blame yourself. You know, we have all of these um, anti-theists. I can't even call them atheists anymore because it's so damn obvious that these people hate God. They believe he exists, but they hate him. And they're going to do everything they possibly can to prove that you should hate him too. Which is the most reverse idea whatsoever, full of hypocrisy and contradiction. I don't even care. I don't even fathom to care to argue the points. Because there are none. It's stupid. Look in the mirror. Start owning up to yourself. People complain all the time, well, how can God let, you know, uh, wars happen and, and how, how all these children dying and, and you know, how can you, how can, all this sickness. Okay, first of all, dumbass, we fell into a world that is now hurt and dying because we sinned at the fall. There were no, there were no diseases back then. In the Garden of Eden, before we fell, there was nothing but paradise. So you did that, not God. And another point. Did he make bullets? No. Did he make the atomic bomb? Oh my gosh, no what? You know what? That was us again. We did that. Did he create war? No. We do that against each other. Okay? If you want to talk about contradiction in the Bible, maybe you should actually try to understand it for what it truly is. I'm telling you what it is. Oh no. I'm owning it. The process of is pretty much what I'm doing right now, telling you people to own up. Because once you've realized that, you need to share that, man. You don't want people to go like that. We gotta own that. We're human beings. We don't need to be following what the fallen angels tell us to do. Who cares what they say? They're in hell. They're gonna stay in hell forever. Why would you want to serve them when you know you're gonna end up with them? That's all they want. They're not gonna offer you any false paradise on earth where you can sin all you want. 
your transhumanization goals is stupid. This is not science fiction, man. This is not Star Trek or Star Wars or Star whatever, okay? This is reality. You're not going to get away with it, man. Christ is coming back. He's on the way, actually. I mean, maybe you should, you know, consider that that whole Nibiru thing isn't what people tell you it is. Maybe it's in the scriptures. Revelation 2012. Others. You know, I, I know I kind of went outside of the topic here, but I just really need you guys to know my point. This is ridiculous. I'm sick of hearing you guys blitter and blather about what you think is right and really only figure, trying to figure it out with yourself with limited understanding and limited um, intelligence. And I'm not talking about brain intelligence. I'm talking about information, okay? And the reason for that is because it's been orchestrated. You have been orchestrated to do this, okay? Before the fall, this was all planned out. Satan planted that tree, not God. Yes, that's in the Bible too. Look, um, I'm just really mad. I'm really upset at the fact that you people chastise the wrong people and the wrong thing. And moreover, the problem is that it only means you're going to be hurting yourself. You're the one choosing to go to hell. Nobody put you there. God did not put you there. In fact, he's taken every precaution possible that you do not go. God says, I want that none go to hell. None. Jew and Gentile. Hebrew and Gentile. But there we sit, stubborn. Stubborn in our own ways. Stubborn in our own brainwashing and manipulation of people telling me what I should or shouldn't be doing. You know what? I'm sick of people doing that. I'm sick of being told what to do. When the God Almighty is saying, look, man, do whatever you want as long as you serve me. I don't know. Because whatever I want is not sinning. One of the biggest things that you religious leaders out there won't do is tell people the truth. And woe to you. Woe to you. Woe to you for telling people, hey, come back every Wednesday and Sunday when you're not supposed to come to church. Uh, and, uh, you know, pray for your sins to be forgiven and then go sin for the rest of the week so you can come and do it again. When the Bible specifically tells us that we can, we, we have the ability not to sin. Christ himself told the woman who was about to be stoned for her being an adulterer. After she said, thank you, my Lord. What did he say? You know what he said? He said, go and do not sin again. I don't hear that coming out of the churches. I don't hear that coming out of any denomination or non-denomination church. Nowhere. Why? Probably for the same reason the Catholics put, took out the uh, commandment of idolatry. Probably for the exact same reason. Control. You don't have to change the entire doctrine. All you got to do is change the name and control the doctrine and reinterpret it the way you see fit, just like Lucifer taught you. He knows the Bible better than any of you. But it doesn't have to be that way. The Hebrews are waking up. We are going to lead the rest of you people back home. But we can't force you to. It's your choice. I love you all. God bless you all in Shia's name.